Hello everyone. Welcome for this online session for parental preparations. Today, in this video, we will going to study the production facilities for parental preparations. So let us start with the lecture. Means how we can carry out the production of sterile products or you can say parental preparations. How we can produce the parental preparations. So the production of sterile products should be carried out in a clean environment with a limit for the environmental quality of microbial and dust particle contamination. Here sterile products means we should maintain the aseptic processing and this is very important process now in this video session we will see the production area so the production area include the cleanup area the compounding area the aseptic area the quarantine area and packaging and labeling area now we will see all this area in the detail now see the flow diagram of aseptic area or you can say the production area so here you can observe this is the stock room from here we can get the material now that particular material should be clean up in this clean up area after that it will come over here to the compounding area then it will come here the in the aseptic filling area means your sterilization is carried out after that it will come to this quarantine area and from the quarantine area the product should come out over here and we have to packaged and label our product then it will come over here to the quality control area or you can say storage and shipping area now we will see the details See, this is the layout of parental processing. In the next video lecture, we will see the parental processing means you can see the aseptic processing. But this is how, this is you can see over here the layout. So here there is a first, so here there is a supply storage means some ingredients, vehicle or you can see solute is come over here in the control clean environment. This is the compounding of the product. And after that there will be a filtration of the solute then it will come over here in the aseptic area in aseptic area there will be a filling and sealing process after that again it come over here in the packaging area and then it will come to the storage area so this is how the aseptic processing is done and how our product is manufactured now see the processing equipment so your equipment cleaning is done it should also be sterilized after that there is a container component it should be clean and sterilized now we will see first the cleanup area cleaning area has walls and ceiling it's made up of whatever walls is there and ceilings in cleanup area is made up of film coating materials means Selling of bottles, you can see the materials involved in a selling of bottles, vials or ampules. So air inside the clean area should be free from dust and microorganisms. Means whatever air is there inside the cleaning area, it should be free from dust and microorganisms. This is a requirement for aseptic processing. Now here you can see this is ensured through high efficiency filter means what the air is filtered and there will be a 95 percent pure air should be there air existing in clean area should be frequently replaced and what is the frequency of this replaced air it's a 10 to 15 air changes per hour so this is the cleanup area now we will see the next is a, now the next is compounding area here compounding is done so in this area this area contains the stainless steel cabinets or counters you can say and is involved in the actual compounding unlike aseptic area 
See, in aseptic area, what we have to do, we have to maintain the sterile conditions. Here, there is a maintenance of sterile condition is not essential, but necessary measures should be adopted to control the dust generated from raw material during weighing and compounding. So, we should take care for weighing and compounding. There should be no any dust or you can say microorganisms, but there is no essential requirement like aseptic area. Now we will see the aseptic area. So the aseptic area, you can say in this area, the strict control measures should be adopted to avoid the contamination of preparation. Our preparation should not be contaminated. So the stainless steel counters and cabinet should be such that they should not allow the dirt particle to accumulate. You can see over here, mixing and storage of the compounded preparation should be done outside the aseptic area. Means, means mixing process should not be done in aseptic area. It should be done outside the aseptic area and that compounded preparation are then transferred into the aseptic area. Through so you can see the pipeline where the filling operation is carried out. So this is all about aseptic area. Here we have to maintain the sterile conditions. Now the next is quarantine area. Now what is quarantine? So this area consists of a store. You can say where in process batches as well as approved batches are stored separately. Means your we have to store our in-process batches, means whatever production is going on and approved batches. We have to store in this quarantine area a product or you can say the in-process batches. It's known as quarantine area. This area has limited assets and is under control of a responsible person. Means what? Without the consent of the in charge, one personal cannot enter into this particular area. This is the requirement of this area and this is known as quarantine area. Now, the next is packaging and labeling area. So, in this area, the batches are packed and labeled. So, packing is carried out by packing machines while labels are obtained by overprinting devices. So we can directly pack the materials or you can say product by the packing machines and we have to label that particular packed product and that is obtained by overprinting devices. See here we have to take care about that at a time only one product label are printed and parental packaging plays a vital role in a production of sterile preparation. So packaging should be carried out in such a manner that sterility of product is maintained. See, we have to take care about sterility. It should be maintained. If it will be break, means our ampule will be break or anything will done or damage, then sterility of the product should not maintain. So while packaging, we should take care about the sterility of the product. Now, we will see the floors, walls and the ceilings. Means how will be the floors, walls or you can say ceilings of the, uh, the area, this production area. So here you can see this man. All clean surfaces such as floors, walls or you can say ceilings must be smooth. It should be easy to clean, disinfected and be constructed to minimize the microbial and particulate contamination. This is our very important re requirement because whatever processing we are doing, it should be aseptic for parental preparation. So, whatever falls, walls and ceiling surfaces are there, it should be disinfected and be constructed to minimize the microbial or you can say the con particulate contamination. So for that we are using flexing and non-flexing type of material for construction of the flow. 
Now what is flexing flow material? We can say for example the synthetic elastomers, for example polyvinyl chloride. Because it is easily repaired, cleaned or you can say it is a cheap and very simple. So it's known as the flexing flow material. And what is this? Non-flexing. So non-flexing flows are made up of, you can say, hard inorganic filler substances in a matrix material. Then this is all about the floors. Then what about walls? So walls should be made up of non-inflammable or you can say fire resistant material. For example, stainless steel. See the walls is made up of stainless steel or you can say glass. The links are sealed to prevent the entry of microbial contamination. And as I said, it should be disinfected. So for reduction of the fungal growth, we can use 1% of the hydroxychloroquine in the paint. We can add this kind of chemical into the paint to reduce the fungal growth. So this is how our aseptic area or you can see production area of sterile products should be. Now we will see the doors, windows and services. Means how the doors and windows should be constructed. So doors and windows should be fit flush with the walls. Means what? Windows should be non-openable. And doors should be well fitted by maintaining the pressure airflow and self-closing. Doors should be self-closing in this area. And doors must be limited in number. There will be no more numbers of the door. Then here you can say services. Then in services we can say all pipes passing through the walls and the room. It should be effectively sealed and it should be flush fitting and easily cleaned. Then if we are talking about the sink and the drainage, it must be excluded from the area where aseptic processes are performed. And the cylinder, the gas cylinder, it should be excluded. And all gas should be piped from outside the area. We can say the light sources in the clean rooms are fitted with these ceilings to reduce the collection of dust and to avoid in the disturbance of the airflow. So this is all about how the services, doors and windows are there. Now air supply. If we are talking about the air supply, we can say the air supplied to a clean room must be filtered. Whatever air is supplied in the room must be filtered. For filtration, we, are, we have to use over here the HEPA filter. It's a high efficiency particulate air filter. So these are the specifications of the air. So the air velocity at all parts of the filter area has to be about this much 0.54 meter per second or you can say this much feet per minute the air filter from the laminar airflow here we are using HEPA filter and that should be a laminar airflow and it should be of a 99.97 percent whatever air we get it should be 99.97 percent free from microbial contamination means there should be a negligible amount there should be no microbial contamination these filters are supported to provide class 100 air and they should be certified every 6 to 12 months So this is the conditions of the air supply. Now we will see this is the laminar airflow. So laminar airflow divide into two batches mainly the vertical or you can say the horizontal. So this is the laminar airflow bench. You can see over here the air inlet, the filter, then the air diffuser. Here there is a HEPA filter. This is the airflow and here this is the working surface and light fixture. 
So this is how the laminar airflow bench is arranged in the aseptic area or you can say clean area. Now this is the it's of a two type horizontal laminar airflow bench and vertical. So this is horizontal laminar airflow bench. You can see over here, here there is a light fixture. Then HEPA filter, again the airflow. Here this is the working surface, pre-filter, there is a air inlet and blower. Now this is the direction of airflow in a horizontal laminar airflow. See, this is the vertical airflow, this is horizontal airflow and direction of airflow in horizontal laminar airflow. This is how the direction of air will be flow. So this is the HEPA filter. You can see over here there is a pre-filter. From here the air is come. Now this air flow is there. Then protective screen and this is the working area. So this is the way or you can say flow of air for horizontal laminar airflow. Airflow pattern. So the general airflow pattern in a clean rooms are how the airflow pattern will be there. So it's divided into three types. Unidirectional airflow, non-unidirectional airflow or you can say combined airflow. We will see by the diagram. The first is the unidirectional airflow. Means the airflow will be in a one directional that is known as unidirectional. Here there is a air conditioning unit, fan is there and HEPA filter. Now whatever air is come over here from this outlet, it will come over here in the air conditioning and from there it's come over here in the fan and HEPA filter. Here the air will get filter and it will become in the unidirectional flow. Now non-unidirectional air flow means see over here. This is the outlet, same air conditioning, fan and HEPA filter. But this kind of, you can say, air flow is there means it's not in a one direction. That's why it is known as non-unidirectional air flow. And the next is combined air flow. Means here we can get the combined air flow. Here you can see the non-unidirectional air flow. And here we can see the unidirectional airflow. So this is how the airflow will be done. Now the very important the personal and protective clothing. Personal and pro personals are the main source of contamination. So the main source of contamination arises from the skin scales you can say which are released by the operator or you can say personal. So, personnel selected to work on the preparation of the parental products must be neat. You can say they should be in a good health and free from the dermatological conditions because it can in improve the microbial infection. So, all the personnel should be trained for good manufacturing practice and aseptic techniques and we can see over here, all the operators should wear this sterile protective clothing which include, you can see over here the headwear, then the rubber gloves, then non-fiber shading, face mask you can say and the footwear. So this is the requirement of personal. All protective clothing is designed to prevent the contamination from the body. It's very important. And all the time, fresh clothing should be provided. So this is all about personal and protective clothing. How there will be a construction of the walls, ceilings, floors and what are the areas, what are the production areas for parental preparation. Now in the next lecture we will see the aseptic processing. Thank you dear learners. If you have any doubt you can email me on this email id or you can contact me on this number.